Hello everybody, welcome back to my studio. My name is Natifa and I am going to walk you through how I created this layout in my journal. I'm playing with Dina Wakely's new um, release um, products. These are some transparencies that she just recent, recently released on October 20th. Um, these have some printed faces on them and I think they're really cool for creating some focal pieces. You can cut them down and just create a bunch of other things. There's a variety of faces on this. And I just think it's really, really great. Um, a great way to kind of incorporate some clear um, images into your piece if you want to be able to see your background. She also has these unprinted clear sheets as well. I think these are really great if you want to stamp on them, if you want to write on them. Um, like I said, they're clear. And they're really great because you can just, you know, sort of layer them as well. They kind of, they can also create that little dimension for you if you want to do that. Um, collage paper. These are really great um, because I love how I just I love this pattern. I love the patterns on these as well. Um, I use them as a kind of a incorporating in sort of like a, a focal piece with my fit one with one of the faces, and so I love it for that. She also has these stencils um, that she released as well. Um, there are two that I I got to play with. Um, this one is called Floor Pattern. Um, which is really great and this is a really unique one um, that i kind of play with a little bit um, and this one is called curly tiles so dina also released um, some new brushes and i have not really played with her brushes before so i got a chance to play with them um, this time and these are really huge <laughs> They're pretty big. You know, this one is a, a, a number 20, number 16 and number 20. Um, these two, they're, they're pretty big. You know, they're, you can, you will not lose them if you're holding them in your hand. So I love that. Um, I got a chance to kind of like, you know, play with these as well. This one is a number 24 and this one is, it's really, is really big, but I think the, the bristles are really great. Um, they're great for mixed media. So I really enjoyed, um, kind of swishing them around that. I'm using Dina's, um, craft journal here. And I've done some some layouts before, but I'm going to um, create a new one, um, kind of just tucked in between some previous pages. So that's what I'm going to do here. I will say one thing about me is that I love I love a good craft paper. I think craft paper is just really really beautiful. Um, I'm gonna try out some of her scribble sticks. I've never played with these before, so I got me a set to play with so I can see what they're like. Um, these are water soluble, so if you um, put them down your paper you should be able to um, use some water with them and kind of get that that um, pigment to move around a little bit So I'm going to start adding some color to this with my scribble sticks. Um, I'm using warmer colors for these. I'm just out the gate. I want to just add some color to my paper and I have no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm also going to start adding some water to this to see how this color moves around on the craft paper. I also use my spray bottle to add some water, but I didn't really like how it was moving around. So I decided to go with some gesso because gesso just always gives me kind of what I'm looking for, um, that kind of messy background. So I added some white gesso to this piece um, and kind of just heated it up just to kind of get that um, drying. Then I went for my cooler colors. Um, I'm here now adding some clear gesso because I found that the scribble sticks works a little bit better on this craft paper for me um, when I add some clear gesso to it. It gives it something to kind of grab onto. And so the the piece then um, or the colors then are not just sort of you know fading into the background they're really just grabbing onto that and they're able to kind of just play so i'm still playing with gesso and playing with the scribble sticks and kind of just seeing what i get here so i would encourage you to just play around and see what you get so now i've moved on to some stencils and i'm just using just some colors these are gloss sprays to just add some color to the background and as I'm drawing, I'm adding some additional color. I'm kind of testing out to see which one of these um, faces I want to use on my background. I love that I'm able to see through it, but I wanted to add some more um, background, you know, goodness to it. So I splattered some white paper, some white paint onto that. And then I pulled out some collage paper. I love these little birds here to see how they would kind of fit with the image. Um, and so I'm cutting it down to size and I'm going to just use some collage medium um, to glue it down to the paper. So I've moved on and I've grabbed my um, Tombow permanent tape roller and I'm going to try to tape this down to my background. Um, but eventually I realized that I don't really want to use that. Um, I wanted this to kind of be a little bit more translucent. Um, and so eventually I'm going to grab some um, collage medium 
and try to use that instead. Um, I typically will use just um, some regular permanent tape because I just love it. It works for me, but for some things, especially for like, you know, transparencies or for, for collage paper, I try to like in this case used use this to kind of make it more translucent because I don't necessarily want to see all the white. I wanted to, I want to be able to see the background a little bit more. And so I'm just painting over this with some collage medium. And that's what you guys see me doing here. So next up, I'm going to start adding some just a bunch of different just texture. I'm using some gloss sprays again on this stencil just to use um, the the black to kind of create a little bit more depth. Depth. I wanted it to again because I'm using this transparency as my my focal image. I want to be able to see a lot of things going on behind the image. So as you can see, I can see all the letterings through that transparency focal piece, and that's what I love. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go in and start stamping just some images just onto the piece. Um, again, there's no rhyme or reason. I just stamping what I like, you know, I wanted to add some more texture to this. And so stamps are a great way to do that. And now I'm moving on to, um, sort of creating this vibrant image. So I'm using an embossing pen and I'm just outlining all of the lines that I see because I want to use embossing powder on this. Um, I typically love to use embossing powders on transparencies and I really thought I would be able to use it on this one, but this transparency is a little bit different than the ones I regularly use. And so it didn't really work too well for me. And so even though I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going to show you me doing this because if you have just a regular transparency, um, it typically works. But when I try to kind of like heat this up, it wasn't working too well for me, but um, I wanted to show you that you can emboss on transparencies typically, but not this one, but it still will make a really, really beautiful, um, image if you are able to. So give it a try. So you'll see as I'm kind of going through with all of these different colors on here that in the end, um, this really looks pretty when you put it on the back. Look at that. It's just beautiful, right? But it doesn't work when you when you hit it. The paper or the transparency started to curl, and I don't know why I was doing it, but I don't know. It just it didn't work, so I had to go to something else. And so I moved on, and I grab another piece, and I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out, and how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to lay it on to my background to see how it works, and kind of go from there. But that's the really beautiful thing I think about this is that you have a variety of images you can pick from that you can kind of use as your background. So We'll see what I do next to kind of, you know, really make this thing work. I really wanted to add some color to it because I just, I don't know, for some reason I love to add color to everything because it's beautiful, but I look at that. I love how that just fits right there, right? It's so great. So I love these little faces as focal pieces. So they're great. <laughs> So once I've established that I want to kind of lay this out here, I, again, I wanted to add some color. So I grabbed my gel pens instead of using the embossing powders, because as you saw, those did not work. And I'm just going over the lines that's already on the image with my gel pens. I'm using like a neon orange here. And then I'm going to go back in with, um, this is sort of like a, it's kind of like a shadowy silvery color, like blue color. And so I am kind of just finding a spot that's going to kind of like work for it. And so I really wanted this to kind of like stand out a little bit, but still be able to see the background. So after I did my, my pen work, I realized that I didn't really, I couldn't really see the image the way I wanted it to. And so I kind of went back in and I'm like, okay, let me start seeing how I can add some additional background portions here so that I can actually see what I just did. So, so I decided to use some of Dina's ledger papers and just sort of add some color around it and just tuck it underneath the transparency. And I think that worked out really well. I also went in and I cut out some words to use on 
the the background um things that i kind of just thought I, one of the things i really love about dina weekly's um work is that she's really great at um sentiments and so that's what i was using there was just sort of using one of the sentiments to kind of make that work um for me and then i just went back in to add some more collage papers i'm trying to create a balance on both sides um adding some white gesso uh just a little bit of mark making on there because mark making is always delicious and then i'm adding some additional colors just to kind of make it so it's not just bland on both sides of the layout and um, with some scribbles around the entire page to kind of create a little bit of a border and adding some colors onto those um, birdie collage paper now i'm trying to actually find where i want to lay out my sentiments and so i wanted to kind of draw around it a little bit and i realized that, that color of um, the paper of the sentiment kind of just blended too much into the background i didn't really like it i wanted something to stand out a little bit so i used a different color of background paper um, with the sentiments and cut those out and i laid those out right there So I'm using some more of the scribble sticks and, uh, to draw some outlines. I also taped that down, that little red um, mark making place, taped it that down as well. Then I'm using a Sharpie to go back in here and just add some polka dots to my white spots um, because polka dots are just a dream. So that's what you guys see me doing here. So for this section, I just wanted to just add some words. I don't even know what I wrote on there, um, but it's something positive onto the transparency because again, that's, that's the beauty of the transparency is that you can also write on it with your own handwriting, which is really beautiful. Um, and so I'm just adding some just words to that. And then I wanted to also add some additional splatters to this. And so I went in with the gloss black, the black gloss spray, and I'm just splattering some, just some ink onto the page because I just think it just adds some yumminess to it. So that's what you guys see me doing here. And don't be afraid to add as many or as much splatter as you want to. Splatter is always yummy, always, always yummy. So that's what you guys see me doing. So I'm, I think I'm kind of at the end of this. I'm going to kind of show you guys what I ended up um, creating and thinking that I'm pretty much done with it um, overall. I really do enjoy making these. I think they're fun to do. And I just want to encourage you not to be afraid to go in there and just try something new and just try and see what you can create. Don't be afraid to, to add lots of color, to not add lots of color. It just depends on what you want to do. But I think um, Dina's products really gives you an opportunity to kind of play where you don't have to create it yourself. And that's the beauty of these, um, these portraits that she's kind of put on transparency as well. So I'm just going to go back in here and kind of dry things out. My um, splatters are still a little bit wet. So I wanted to dry those out. And that's what you guys see me doing here. So after I dried this out, I wanted just to kind of create more balance. So I took a red um, scribble stick and went back in there and just sort of outlined around those birds on the other side. It's not, it wasn't really necessary, but I really wanted to not make it seem like these birds are kind of just out in left field, but it created a balance on the left side and the right side with the red colors. And so that's really all I did there. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy seeing this process. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.